surprised by um, what Oklahoma State did last night to Baylor? Well, I think every game in this conference is, has been a, an incredible battle, and certainly watching that battle last night, you know, just it comes down to a couple little possessions, a couple plays, I should say, a couple little possessions come down to single possessions. And, you know, I certainly have a great, great deal of respect for Baylor, as does our program. I mean, they're really tough on both ends of the court. They can push the ball up the court and score. They have great speed. Uh, to attack quickly, they can really shoot it, they can attack the rim, they offensive rebound, and then they defend, you know, they're just really stingy, they're tough to score on. So, you know, just really, really solid all around. I guess you go into it with the mindset that they're going to be uh, angry and motivated, and that's how you approach it with your team? Them. Well, I'm sure they're going to be, they're going to play at a really high level. And so we're going to have to meet and exceed that to the best of our ability, the, the intensity, but also be disciplined at the same time. And I think that's what we are, you know, we're, we're developing that ability to, and I thought we did that in the, the third quarter of our last game. How do we play really hard, but also play really disciplined? And there's a, a possession in that third quarter where Maddie goes after a loose ball. And, and doesn't get it, but doesn't take herself completely out of the play. The possession's kind of at half court, and then gets back in the play, and then beats two ball screens, and then there's a deflected pass, and then she dives on it at that point in time. And so, just I think from I go back to our first game against Oklahoma when we had a situation somewhat similar to that, and we dove after we took ourselves out of the play, and then Taylor Robertson hit a shot from almost half court, right from the logo at that point in time, which Savannah flew in and contested it. But just that, that little understanding, that discipline to just not give, to, to play solid, I think we're getting better at that right now. Yeah, and you mentioned that third quarter. Was that overall maybe the best quarter you played this year? Well, I think it was the most disciplined quarter that we've played. You know, I think we, we did some good things. We saw some different looks defensively. TCU came out and pressed. They guarded some ball screens a little bit differently. You know, we spaced it. We attacked it. You know, we got to the rim, and then when we kicked it out, we got some really good shots out of it too. Defensively, we stayed really solid without fouling. I think that's something that we've got to continue to work on is that we want to be aggressive and we want to play hard and we want to play smart, but we can't put ourselves in positions where the other team's scoring at the free throw line. I, I, I think the stat is correct. Right, Andrew, uh, you've had 17 quarters now where you've given up less than 10 points. That's pretty good. Is that what's what's that say? Is that team defense? Is that individual? What are you doing to do that? Well, it's 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 all of it. it's team defense and finishing plays, and and that's something that we didn't do a good job of in the second quarter against TCU. We kind of had a we flipped completely where we we fouled in the second quarter put them at the free throw line, and we fouled on both ends of the court. We fouled trying to get offensive rebounds, trying to be aggressive. We fouled in some moving screen scenarios, a back screen scenario, some ball screen scenarios. So we, we put ourselves in tough spots on the offensive end by fouling. And then on the defensive end, we didn't box out and finish at, at the same level. You know, But some of it comes down to when you don't finish plays, you're, you're – positioning is you're out of position because you got beat on some action earlier and now it's hard to get back and so then you got to go back to okay it's more than just we have to box on and be physical we've got to put ourselves in the right position earlier in the possession coach we're talking about scoring i mean we've talked about maddie and jj a number of times but these past couple of games you've had some other players put up some double figures too offensively what's that evolution that you're seeing from the rest of the team well, it's something that's really important for us, you know, in order to continue to be, um, to continue to grow and find different ways to score. You know, certainly teams can focus on one player or one action and work to take that away. And so then how do we create some other way to find find ways to score and other players either stepping up and, and scoring in at the rim or other players hitting shots. But maybe it's just more of how we screen and how we get the ball moving. And I think we've gotten a little bit better at, at some of those type of things. Maybe it's our, you know, we have to keep, keep working on our spacing. But it's really important for us to continue to grow, not only on the defensive end, but certainly to grow on the offensive end. We've got to find ways, you know, with teams that can really score, we, uh, we've got to find ways to score with them, too. What do you see from Andrews? What, what do you like about her game? Well, she's, she's so solid. She's fast. She's solid. She can shoot it. She can get to the rim. She doesn't rush her decision making. She does a lot of really, really solid things, and she's really good defensively on top of it. There's a reason why she was the National Player of the Week. She does more than one thing really, really well. 
this is not a big Baylor team by Baylor standards. Um, and I guess one of their uh, players is out, right? Blackwell, I believe, she's been kind of in and out. Has that changed how they you approach playing them since they don't have that traditional Baylor size that they normally have? Well, if you look at them defensively, they're really tough and stingy. You know, they so maybe they they don't have the same – you know, shot blocker potential, but they do have kids that can block shots because they're long and athletic. You know, it, they are, they really attack. Uh, I think they're, they get to the rim in a lot of different ways. They use some ball screens to get there, but they can get there in transition. They can get there in their post game. They get there in offensive rebounds. They're really quick at, at rebounding. You know, so I think they, they've found a way to be highly, highly successful doing what they're doing at this point in time. How different of a team are they with in without Blackwell? Well, Blackwell is someone who's had – their whole team has a great deal of experience. You know, they have four or five kids who – four kids in their lineup that have played significant minutes at Baylor, very veteran kids. Then you add Blackwell to that mix, who is a kid who can score from outside, who can really get to the rim, who can score it at the rim, who draws a lot of fouls. You know, and, but she also has a ton of experience too. Now her experience may not be at Baylor per se, but she's played in a lot of big games and, and she knows – what that looks like and what that takes. I think she has. She plays with a lot of energy. She makes a lot of things happen for him. You faced, uh, I guess, four of the players on this year's team. You faced in the NCAA tournament last year. So that when Kaya too has played against them. Is there any carryover there? Well, there's carryover in a lot of things that they, the way they're, they they attack you. There's carryover that way. But the reality is they're a different team too because of you know they're graduating their two post kids and we're a different team than we were. You know we played them. Um, here at West Virginia last year and certainly in South Dakota last year. So it would be a, a very different, I think, attack approach.